Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome back. So I can see loads of you are here already. I'm just saying I'll pick a few off the screen. It's going so fast, all the chat. Amanda, Sandra, hi, Joe, Christine, uh, Phil, Jan, Elizabeth. Hi, everybody. Karen. Great. I know a little bit further up, people were saying no sound, but can I just check that you can all hear me now? All right. I think it was just that we weren't quite live yet. Uh, oh yes, yeah, someone said can hear you now. Fab. Okay, just do let us know in the comments if you have any trouble. So welcome back. If you don't know who I am, my name's Claire and I'm the artist and designer for Thirsty Brush and I demonstrate on Craft Crate and Craft TV. Uh, so what we're going to do today is one card demonstration. I'm going to do a slightly longer one with one card. Uh, so we'll get on to that in a moment. Uh, but what I wanted to say was thank you guys for tuning in for the Sunday one that we did um, which was the first pre-recorded show that went out on Sunday at one o'clock so anybody who didn't manage to watch that don't forget I'm live from the studio here on Thursdays at one and then there's a recorded show that goes out at one o'clock on a Sunday but I record it while I'm here on a Thursday but I'm still always available for comments and chats and things like that on the Sunday as well. I just don't travel up and down here the two days. Um, but it's lovely to see you all again there and see you all chatting to each other. I hope you've had a great week. So before I do the crafting, can I show you and say please excuse me that I'm sitting down for these next couple of videos that I've broken my toe. <laughs> so don't ask me how because I don't know. <laughs> uh, how you can even break a bone when you don't know about it who knows but I'm okay I haven't got a cast or anything like that I'm just trying to stay off it a little bit uh, so if I'm not flying around like I normally do so I just wanted to show you the products that we're using today so there's the happy heart stamp and die and uh, as the last couple of weeks we've done an offer haven't we where you buy the A5 stamp set and you get the coordinating die for free so we're doing that again today so it's with this happy heart one so that's the stamp set with the large uh, like blossom heart wreath and we're going to use i think all of those stamps definitely these two wreaths today and then the coordinating die that comes with it our uh, tracy isn't here yet yes where's tracy i'm sure she'll join you so the coordinating die set that I will use and go through the different pieces with you. So don't worry about the sizes on there. That's just for illustration. This is what you would get free of charge. So as before, there's no code or anything like that. Don't put them both in your basket. Just put the A5 stamp in, happy heart. So you can either search on the Stamps By Me website or the Thirsty Brush website for happy heart. Or if you put in FBL, uh, like Facebook Live, that FBL, and then everything that I'm using on today's will be there anyway. So you've got the buy one, get uh, buy the stamp, get the die free. And I'm going to be doing a little background as well using one of the stencils uh, that we've still got a few in stock of. Um, it's not an offer on that one, but because I'm using it, it's still under that FBL search if you want to see everything that I'm using today. Should we get on and do a bit of crafting? Oh, here she is. I'll try to see. I said hello, you must have missed me. <laughs> Absolutely. I always wondered what the initials are. Yes, FBL. I think it was uh, came from, obviously this is YouTube Live, not Facebook Live, but I think that uh, process came from when Tony used to do a Facebook Live, some people just got used to it. Just have a sip of tea. Right, so the first thing that I want to do today is I am using this in the in the card, but I want to create a background with this stencil um, and do a couple of techniques with this. So because I'm doing this part as well, it just takes a little bit longer and then I, I thought rather than rush to do two cards, um, we take our time a little bit more and as I can't hop around too much. <laughs> so what we need to do, I've got a piece of A5 card, just standard white card stock, and I've got another one cut to slightly smaller than my 5x7 card blank. Um, so this one's going to be my background, this slightly smaller than 5x7. And this one I'm going to use to then stamp on top of. So we're going to do two backgrounds and we'll do a slight variation between them. 
um, just so we can see how the two techniques work. You may well have seen this technique before. It's not a new one to me as such, but it's something that I just like doing. Have I got my spray? Oh, yes. So this is where I hope I haven't forgotten things. So what I need to do, I just want to get my acetate as well. Just so I don't get too much mucky, I'll just use a piece of paper. I just don't want to get Tony's lovely mat too messy. If you've got a messy mat or something like that, that's good. So let's do the larger piece first. I'm going to turn the stencil over, although these hearts can be used either way. And I've started to tape my card onto the stencil rather than the other way around, so your tape doesn't get any in the way of any of your inking. Let's see what everybody's saying today. Have you all been up to much? You're very good <laughs> colour coordinated with your mug today. Yes, it's a. I go for this one. It's like a thirsty brush green, isn't it? I gravitate towards it when I come. Although I'm not really colour coordinated with pink hair and zebra. We just lo love a demo, no matter if it's one card or two. Ah, oh, thank you, Hazel. So yeah, I'm going to hold that in place. Is Tony watching? Probably, yeah, she's in the building, so I'm sure she will be. So then, yeah, because you, if you do it like that, I've noticed that you don't get any tape marks that might be interfering with your inking. So before we... Oh, actually, I should have just done the one side. Yeah, ignore me a second. Do your, your colour first. So I've got three pinks here. Distress oxides, but use any blending ink you've got got two lighter pinks, the sponge sugar and the tattered rose, and a worn lipstick. So I'm going to use a bit of a grey like I do, oh, you've seen me do a lot. We're going to do a bit of this and a bit of that, and I'm going to do it straight from the pad. So you're putting quite a lot of colour on. And this is why I say it's good to have something protecting your surface. I mean, they are water-based, they do wipe off. But Hi, Barbara. Wendy, hi. And they'll kind of blend, I just find the oxides blend a little bit more when you're using this kind of technique. You haven't even got to bother with your brushes. Well, wow, loads of you watching today. And just those different shades give it a bit of variation. So once you've got the surface completely covered, so there's two ways to do this and I'm going to show you both. One is I'm going to, you're going to kind of get a bleached out effect. One is I'm going to spray the stencil with water. So you want enough, not just one or two sprays, you want enough so you can kind of see some droplets whether you'll be able to see there on the camera. So it's not soaking, it's not like a puddle, but I can see individual droplets of water. So if I pop that on there. You can even, so it's up to you whether you do it that way round, or you can even do it that way and then to hold it down just so you don't get any extra water squidging out the side of those hearts. And then what we should get, let me peel it back. Should have had enough time, I hope. Very dark on there. Sometimes you get a bit more than others. Slightly bleached out. Let's try it the other way and see if it comes out a bit more. Or we could, let's see, a bit more water maybe. Now 
Maybe it needs an extra second. Jackie, you got your granddaughter. What are the paint names? The inks I'm using, uh, they're Tim Holtz Distress Oxides. But anything where you get this kind of bleachy out technique, so any water-based ink, that's a bit better. You can see that a little bit more. And let's dry it off now. I'll leave that one to dry a second while we do the, the other way. So this way is going to be the opposite, where I'm going to ink it up and then I'm going to spray through the stencil and see which gives us the most definition. But sometimes you want something a bit subtler, don't you? So again, put your colour down first. This one's going to be a background for a card. So think about if there's particular shades that you want in particular places. Claire, just want to say a huge thank you for the goodie bag. Oh, fab, Pat, you had some fun. I've seen loads of people have had theirs now. I think we're pretty much all gone out. Couldn't agree more, Pat. Oh, I'm so glad that you're all pleased with them. I really am. And it's a great way. I noticed a couple of people were saying, you know, I haven't got many of the stamps. Is this a good way for, you know, to build up your stash? And absolutely. So there's tons of ink on there. And bear in mind as well, the lights are quite bright here. So when, when you do this at home, the bolder the colours you use, that's like the colour of my hair, isn't it, today? The bolder the colours you use, the more definition you get when you bleach. So... Like I said, I'm going to put my card on that way. Should have done this one first. Does this work with any inks? Any water-based inks where you can get this effect. So let me think of a few examples. You don't want your pigment-based inks like um, the, some of the Dovecraft inks are just pigment-based. You don't get enough... Uh, it doesn't react with water, so distress inks, distress oxides, I've tried it with Altenu, I've tried it with Tony's Generation ink pads, so um, play around with what you've got. So this time I'm spraying through the stencil, leave it a couple, a couple of seconds. Hi Jo, I haven't got this stamp, wonder if pension <laughs> will stretch a bit more. <laughs> Ah, oh, Denise, the first time you've managed to catch us live. So once it's reacted a little bit with the water, just press out. And can you see it lifts, the, you will see bits of ink come out on your paper towel. So the other one was very subtle. Let's see if this, yes, this has given the reverse in a much more, still on the camera because it's quite light, but you can see that's much more defined. If you used really deep pinks and reds, you would get even more. But because we're going to stamp onto some of this, we're just using it. It's not going to be the kind of focal point of the card. I just wanted to mainly show you that two different ways of doing it so you could play around with whatever stencils that you've got. So, should we have a look at this lovely stamp? So, I've got one piece. That's my card background. I might need to dry them off with my tool, but I'll try and leave them on its own if I can. Make right, sure you wipe your stencil off. And this is the one that I'm going to stamp and die cut. Hi, Maxine. Yes, Joe, that's much clearer, isn't it? I think when I've done this before at home with lots of blues and greens and purples and things, I think you can see more definition doing it this way. But can you see it's the reverse? So this way you're stencil hearts should be darker than the background and this way your background should be darker than the hearts but I think just under the cameras just you don't see quite as much definition but try some really bold colours and see how it handled especially double ordered by mistake oh gosh Lillian is it uh, what did you order uh, the goodie bags or the the heart stamp if you need any help, just um, email us. It's info at thirstybrush.co.uk. 
somebody can give you a hand if, the, if you want. So that one I'm going to leave to dry by itself for a bit. Let's get this one nice and dry so we can stamp onto it. Hi Irene, how are you? I think that's starting to stand out a little bit more now, isn't it? That, like I say, it's still quite subtle, but now we're drying it off. <laughs> Tina, hi everyone, too fast, can't remember all the names. I know, when it's on the screen, I can't see anybody. Uh, everybody all at, all at once, there's too many of you. <laughs> Just make sure, because we've used quite a lot of water, make sure it's dry enough for you to stamp on without any bleeding. Oh, you're going to catch up with the beginning in a bit, Irene, no problem. Yeah, Joe, this stencil is really useful. I'll talk you through another way in a second. That I found is really pretty to use. Sorry, it's taken a long while, but there was so, we used so much water. I think I've used a different cardstock as well than I normally do. Do you ever do that? And you do a different technique and you think you've picked up the same cardstock and then it doesn't... It does something different, but sometimes these are how we find out uh, how different things work, isn't it? Hi, Wendy, you just joined in. Right, so we've got those nice subtle hearts. So, yeah, just before I pop the stencil away, Joe, you were saying um, <laughs> you need it. But uh, another way to use is really good for, you can get like a two or three layered effect. I do it a lot where I spray through. Say you want a, a white background and then you want the, the hearts to be your focal point. Spray through with an ink spray or something like that for your first layer. Dry that off. Move it slightly, say 45 degrees, 90 degrees. You can even have them like upside down if you want. But move them slightly on your card. Go back with some, like an ink pad colour or even just grey or something like that. Looks nice. Dry that off. And then... Um, move again a third time so the pattern varies and then emboss through it looks absolutely stunning so i will um i'll do a card like that and i'll pop it uh, on instagram or something maybe not record it but um i'll give that a go and, and take a photo of one right then so the card i'm using this is i think it's the craft uk um stamping card I'm not 100% sure because I've got stacks and stacks and I've normally labelled them up and I've been a bit naughty lately and I haven't but it's certainly just kind of standard white card stock uh, it's probably 250-300 so a decent weight because you're using quite a lot of water nothing less than to say 250 for something like that Joe, that sounds like a fab idea. Oh, great, yeah, because that's the thing with stencils, isn't it? We kind of run out of ideas sometimes, so I haven't done any stenciling on this kind of thing before, so I thought we'd have a go. So, just grab the Eureka. So what I'm going to do is stamp out this lovely wreath onto this inked background, and that's got like a really nice dry chalky finish now. And I'm just going to stamp in black. We've already got a lot of different colours here. Let's do this blossom as well. And can you see, even with that wreath, which is huge, on there in the stamp set, you've still got this lovely little version, which we're going to use on the card as well. And you can even decoupage up these extra little blossoms if you want to. But for now, let's use that. So if you join late, this is this week's offer by the Happy Heart Stamp and you get the die free. Same as before, don't put them both in your basket, just put the stamp in your basket. So I'm using some black ink, this is Versafine. 
And the reason I'm using VersaFine, as we talked about before on previous weeks, is that this is waterproof. So if that's slightly damp still, or you know, is still a bit maybe absorbent than it should be, it's not going to budge anywhere. It's not going to bleed. And let's go twice, just so we can make sure all those extra little bits. But this is a hand-drawn design that I did very, very early on in our Thirsty Brush journey. So if you've joined us kind of, not later on in this YouTube, but later on in terms of, we're two years old now, so you probably won't have seen this unless you, you watch the first few shows that I did on Create and Craft. But it's a very, very popular. It's great for, imagine I've used it for like wedding cards and things like that, and you can put initials or names, photos, that kind of thing in between. I've just got a tiny bit there I haven't pressed. This is why I love stamping tools, don't you? And just go back in and do that. Start that off. Did you have a stamp that you were using today on offer on Crate and Craft? I think I bought possibly. Um, there was one, it might have been on offer when it was very first released. If you mean recently, you're probably talking about a different heart one. I think there was one called I Heart You that was in a set with another. Stamp and die, Eileen. This is a different heart to that. Um, that one had got like roses on, so this is different. So unless you bought it quite early on, or not during a show, it might be different. You might want to check. <laughs> Did someone say offer? Yes, Maxine. So this heart, uh, heart stamp and die, happy heart, is the same as the last week's offer. You put the stamp in your basket, you get the die free. So. Eureka away for just a second. Let me grab the dies. This is the thing with sitting down. Oh, there they are. <laughs> so I've got mine in. We talked about these loads, didn't we? Tracy, did you manage to get any cheaper packets of these? Anywhere I know you were looking because the price had gone up. Really helps to see the product demonstrated. It, yeah, I think it's... It's not just about getting some ideas, it's, it's just visualising what that product looks like in real life and how you can use it. So you get this outline die which you can use as like a matte and layer or you can kind of stamp in and cut the middle out for example. You can cut, do your outline which I'm going to do now and cut the middle out and then you've got these extra dies for the blossoms. like the idea of the clear packets. Yes, have a look on my YouTube, Christine. It was a very quick video a couple of months ago even that I did just showing that I keep them all in a pot in those little packets. Um, when I put this away, I'll show you. So the, 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 pack, uh, the stamp fits in the front and then the uh, die fits in the back. The only thing extra I had to buy was some more magnetic sheets, but so that's your outline one. And the reason that I've done this separate rather than you know, it would be very easy to just pop one die in there in the packet for you, but it gives you that flexibility. If you want to stamp a sentiment straight onto there, you can, or you can take it out, make it shake a card, that kind of thing. Just run out of tape just to line that up yeah it takes an extra second to line it up properly because they're separate but it's worth it I think to give you that flexibility am I about right I think so and then that one's just a simple outline I'm running out of tape pieces. I'm trying to avoid getting up, but I think I'm going to have to. <laughs> have I got? No, let's try a bit of that. I only need a tiny bit for this, this piece. There we go. Uh, 
Uh, yes, Q card holders, that's right, Tracy, that's what they're called, isn't it? Q Connect or something like that is the company that makes them. I can't even find any to buy a load in for the shop for you. I had one lot, but they seem to be out of stock everywhere, and that's the manufacturers. Maybe that's why they've gone up so much on um, Amazon. Just pop that through the die cutting machine. So then, let's get our card and think about how we're going to construct this. I haven't fully decided how to put this together yet, so we might be winging it. Yeah, that's right, Tracy. I paid about six pounds for my original hundred, and then I bought a couple of hundred for the shop. But like I say, I just can't even get hold of them anymore at any price. But I'm not charging people that. £22, that's ridiculous. So we've still got a bit left here outside of the die cut. That, you know, you could use these little scraps. Use a punch or, you know, don't waste it. Use it for something. There we go, so that's our bit to decoupage. Some on eBay, still more than the original. Why? Wow. It's like face masks, isn't it? Have you seen the price of some of the face masks? No. I mean, I know we've all got to wear them, but the prices some people are charging are absolutely ridiculous. So the same with that middle. I wouldn't throw that away. I'd use that for something. Hand gel, yep. I think I saw in my local pharmacy they were selling 50 disposable masks for £33 or something. I thought that was disgusting. I know they've got to, you know, cover their costs and make a bit of a profit, but that was madness. So let's get rid of, make some room. So who was it that was just asking about the packets and said that looked like a good idea? So this is what I do. I put all my dies back on here. So I've purposely cut these to A5. So just buy sheets of A4 um, magnetic sheets. I think these are like 0.5 or 0.8 mil. Put all your stamps back on. I mean, I used to just keep them in the packets they come in, but eventually when you're taking in and out all day every day like I am you know that maybe they can split or something like that so I put my stamp in first with the bit where the thumb is and then I just slide in whoops all the dies behind and then I've got everything to hand when I need it and I just put them all in a box or so you can flick through it's really really easy so five by seven card I've got a piece of navy to mat and layer on. Just going to use some double sided tape for that or wet glue, whatever you've got. What size is the square die? Will it go through my big shot? Is the big shot, bear remind me, is that the A5 or the A4 one? I think it will go through both, but just confirm for me so I know. I don't want to say yes and then. <laughs> they're just making masks out of their bed sheets clean ones I hope or new ones <laughs> A5 yes I'm pretty sure it will yeah because that look it fits in that A5 pocket with room to spare so if your plates are that big absolutely it's going to go through the A5 it's slightly smaller than a 6x6 card I haven't got any nails today, I can't get the, can't pick at the tape. God help Tony Amanda and Joe. <laughs> you all planning hotel deluxe quality. Oh, very posh mac, uh, masks. Oh, 
Right, so that's just my matte and layer. So this one's been cut slightly smaller. Before I mount that on there, I want to add some extra detail because I said I hadn't decided fully the layout. I know I definitely want to have this large one kind of coming off the page somehow. I'm thinking like that. Excuse me if I'm looking at the other camera, I'm seeing how it looks. So I'm thinking like that. And then we'll decoupage that on top, maybe. But I want to use up the small stamp too. You're going on a road trip at the SBO shop. Brilliant. Oh, well, tell me when you come in. If I can be here too, I will. Um, so I'm thinking maybe that coming over that side. Yeah, I think I like that. So just pop those out of the way to get the Eureka back. Now I know roughly where it's going to go. Love the colour, even though I'm not a pink lady. Yeah, I mean, that, that's why I try and mix up what colours I'm using. You know I love a lot of green and gold and, uh, and pinks and stuff. But, you know, the main thing is, is for us to show you how to use things and techniques and then you can make it fit your favourite colours, can't you? Or what I love doing is the favourite colours of the person that I'm giving it to. My best friend Jane, she absolutely loves kind of those jewelry colours, purples and teals and things like that. So... I like to make somebody a card, especially when it's something really colourful, the whole thing is coloured, to fit that person. So that's just going off the page. That's okay there. And do we need any more stamping? No, I can keep that away. So next, let's pop that on our card. I'm trying to look as well at all your comments and keep up. Oh, we will come to see you too. Oh, that would be lovely. I'll tell you what would be a really good time to, uh, if you're ever coming to an event, like if any of you ever go to the NEC, the big show. I don't know whether the Christmas one, it's normally at, it's Christmas, but it's what end of October it's like normally the half term week the last week in October so obviously we exhibit there as well but if you're staying up for a couple of days or anything like that um, you can see us at the stand and then you can always pop in and see the shop maybe before you go home and stuff as well if you like or what we've done sometimes before is uh, just lining this up this is so hard to line up Sorry if it's one key, but while I'm sat down, I'm not <laughs> tall enough to reach over. Love the NEC, Claire. Will it be on this year? Yeah, I really don't know. I don't know. Uh, I can't get a, an official answer. It's on the website that it will be, but they haven't taken any money from us as storeholders. I've been trying to contact individuals for confirmation that it actually will go ahead before we pay for our stands and things like that, but I don't know. And I don't know whether you, any of you remember last year, we were supposed to do it last year as well, and me and the family went away to Mallorca. Sorry, I'm just cutting some smaller pieces here if you wonder what I'm doing. Um, we went away to Mallorca for a half, well, around half term, and then my husband... Uh, had an accident, <laughs> fell over and ended up in hospital. So we didn't get back in time for NEC. <laughs> so I really hope it's on this year, otherwise that's two years in a row. We haven't been able to do it. Booked with the firm last year, NEC, not enough takers. Oh. But my favourite one that I'm really missing at the moment is the Motorcycle Museum, because that's our kind of... Like up north, you guys have... Um, Got the Terry Ross ones, haven't you? And Port Sunlight and things like that that we go to as well. But the one at the Motorcycle Museum run by a guy called Simon for Excalibur. He's like our local Midlands one. <laughs> Who's saying what there? <laughs> 
somebody come in with something uh, horrible or just not related. So I'm just adding some foam pads to this one. So we've got the flat message, um, flat message, flat stamped image on the top. And then again, just a bit of variation. I'm looking how that is on the camera and how straight it is because normally I'll be putting my head right over the top. Let's go there. Oh, I didn't need to put them that side. Too busy chatting, look. Put extra foam pads that side that I didn't need. Well, again, I would not throw that away if I was at home. I'd get another quick card out with a mat and layer, um, chop that off and put it straight onto something else before that got sticky. Are you still in Sutton Carford? Yes, Amanda, I remember you telling me. Three miles from the centre, Leicester. Still in lockdown, Carol? Oh. I bet uh, you're thankful for the internet then at the moment. Just chop this bit off with my scissors. But yeah, you can make another. Oops. Could make another card out of that. Use that on another side of another one and stamp the large one again. So in fact, to keep it, look, I've got a bit of spare. I'm not going to waste that. Just clear up a bit. And then I think if we decoupage this up and then add a sentiment, I think we're about done. So this should fit. You can either use it on its own or you can put that on. So that's the main part of the card. So let's pop a sentiment in there. Do you remember last week I had a few spare of these holographic ones lying around? So I'm just going to see what, what fits. Pray or heart, let's have that high. And I'll use that. I've got two holographic ones here to glue together, but obviously don't waste, just because this happens to be here. Do use the one underneath if you're going to glue two together. Just use cheap white or black card or something. I love the colour of the card. Yeah, I, I really love playing around. A lot of us have got ink pads, haven't we? And I like trying different colour combinations between them, either three tonally or, um, say, contrasting ones or complementing colours and just playing around with different colour combos and seeing what different stuff we can achieve. So that's a little bit firmer now. I've got two together. And just a bit of... Do you have a bit of sparkle as well? And I think we're nearly done, aren't we? Colours work so well. Yeah, I mean, it's up to you. You could... Let's try, actually. I'll put this on, but I will try another little experiment. We've, we're still... I haven't droned on too long, have I? Uh, we'll try a bit of an experiment if you're using some of that oxide as uh, a bit of a paint maybe. I'm going to put one of these sequins as the dot for the high. Someone got a question about the uh, inks? Uh, yeah, it's um, exactly as Joe's replied there, the distress inks rather than the oxides, yes you can, um, it's, they still react with water so you can still get that bleached effect. Again I would really really look at using some of the bolder colours because the effect is even more subtle um, with the distress inks I have personally found. Um, but you can still do the blending, get your background and then do those two techniques for your stencils, absolutely. Um, but, you know, just play around with the colours that you want to use. So what was I going to do? Oh, yes. So, I don't know, I'm thinking, what if you wanted to then colour in a little bit of that even more? 
you can even paint with this kind of thing. So the darker one, so just so it shows up against the lighter. If you've got your any of your paint brushes and use it almost like a watercolour. So you could go in and do some little flicks or accents or something. Again, I probably should have bought some darker colours here really, so you could really see the boldness. But you can add a bit of depth and dimension. Can you see you're just getting a little bit of shadow there? Of course, if I was doing this on a darker area, it's not going to show up. So, but if I concentrate on this flower, that's already light. And then I'm not using much water, almost the ink as it is. Just to add a little bit of light and shade. Maybe those little like heart shaped leaves even. Okay, so I hope that's given you a few ideas. Let's have a look at the finished card. So yeah, it's got a nice bit of dimension on, but some variation and a different way I wanted to show you of using your wreaths as well to stamp them off the page and even die cuts off the page. Uh, because I know when we did the uh, Christmas wreath a few weeks ago, and I've got lots of wreaths in my first few collections and Christmas is that of course they're made for um, stamping and die cutting and being the focal point in the centre of your card but there's no reason at all why you can't use them in different ways as well and it not just be slap bang in the middle of the card and that's it you know just think about other ways that you can use them rather than just stamping and, and colouring and then popping them on some pattern paper or a white background so let's just have a play isn't it uh, so thank you so much for watching guys can't believe again how many of you have joined in uh, so a couple of things before I go don't forget if you join late and you didn't hear the offer it's by this happy heart stamp set the A5 stamp set and so basically buy that and you get the dies free uh, don't put them both in your basket just put the stamp in the basket and we will do it automatically for you there's no codes or just put the stamp in um, and I will see you, I'll be back again on Sunday, 1pm, so I will record it while I'm here and I've got something completely different, not even a card, that I'm doing for Sundays. Uh, so I hope you can join me for that, I will be available for comments and then live I will see you back here next Thursday. So have a, a great rest of the week guys and hopefully might be standing up next week, who knows. Anyway, enjoy yourselves, have a lovely evening and take care.